regional correspondent Aisha Ismail. Now, Aisha, at the end of that report, we heard there little change in the post-Mugabe era. But without the shadow now of Mugabe's 37-year rule hanging over the country, could this be the push the current president, Emerson Manangagwa, needs to pull Zimbabwe out of its current economic crisis? Well, it's going to take a lot for, for him to do that. If one only looks at the economy of Zimbabwe at the moment, it is in tatters. Zimbabwe has um, two million people who go hungry almost every day. Um, a cost of a loaf of bread is over um, six US dollars, and Zimbabwe has more than three million economic migrants. So the country is in a complete um, as somebody described it yesterday at the World Economic Forum, and, and may I just take this opportunity to remind you that the president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Manangagwa, is in Cape Town at the moment attending the World Economic Forum on Africa. And somebody I spoke to there um, described the Zimbabwe economy as being in, 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 in the ICU in and, and said that something really needs to be done. But the question is, there needs to be political will to change Zimbabwe. Now, we know that Robert Mugabe, over the years, has, while people were going hungry, he and his wife, Grace, were living a lavish life while millions of people were going hungry. And it also appears that Emerson Manangagwa isn't doing anything about creating more jobs in his country so that the um, millions of people who have left Zimbabwe can return and work in his country. So the economy is in tatters. Very little has changed since Mugabe stepped down in 2017. Now, of course, news of his death only breaking in the last hour or so. But I guess throughout the day when Zimbabweans, you know, it sinks in that he is dead. I mean, how will they remember Robert Mugabe? Will they remember him as this revolutionary hero who fought white minority rule or as a despot desperate to cling to power? Well, I was just reading some of the tweets on social media, and while Emerson Manangagwa described Robert Mugabe as an icon of liberation, um, some people, one person wrote, rot in hell, Mugabe. Another person also wrote that there's no reason to mourn Mugabe, and that he is the reason why the Zimbabwean people are suffering. So not a lot of kind words for the person who was described as an icon of of, of, of of liberation and I'm, I'm sure during the course of the day more people will be tweeting and, and taking to social media to talk about Robert Mugabe Do I ask who that question ruled or Zimbabwe not? for almost four years. And uh, just finally, I mean, we hadn't seen much of Robert Mugabe since his removal from power in uh, November 2017. What had he been doing in those two years sort of out of the spotlight? Well, he has been um, reportedly being um, going to, um, to Dubai and, of course, to Singapore regularly, where he was receiving um, medical treatment. And that was another thing that, that, that people were talking about. Um, you know, citizens of Zimbabwe are saying that he is able to travel abroad and they were talking about the properties that he has overseas and the fact that he was not receiving medical treatment in his own country. He was receiving medical treatment in Singapore. But I think what's also important to remember is that Robert Mugabe will also be remembered for the Gukurohundi genocide, which saw more than 20,000 people being slaughtered in the Midlands province in the mid-1980s, and that was under Robert Mugabe's watch. Okay, she is male. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us here.